Hey, Eric Sider here, and in this video, I'm going to be reviewing one of my favorite books, Cradle to Cradle, Remaking the Way We Make Things. It's almost 20 years old, and it's still amazingly innovative today, which is kind of sad, but nonetheless, um, it's also highlights the problem with recycling, which is getting a lot of press at the moment. Ever since China shut its doors to Western trash, everyone's been scrambling to figure out what to do with all this stuff. Now recycling has good intentions, but ultimately it's not a solution. At best, it's a band-aid on an amputation. So. The materials were never designed to be recycled. Most of the materials we're trying to force into other products were never designed for that purpose either. So there's a lot of unintended issues with materials, off-gassing, chemicals you need to add to recycled material to turn it into something else, all the energy required to force materials into other products they were never intended to be. So. It's not simple, unfortunately, and because the economics of recycling are showing up now that there's no uh, one buyer for all the world's trash, a lot of cities are just putting it in the landfill. And uh, I was reading an article about uh, cities outside of Boston that one city went from either no cost to its recycling program or a potentially $70,000 uh, positive to half a million dollar cost to continue. So that's going to be a problem. That's going to keep happening. And sadly, a lot of recycling is just going to be going into the trash. And that brings me back to my book today, Cradle to Cradle, um, authored by... Uh, William McDonough, who's an American architect, and Michael Braungart, a German chemist, and they actually created a whole design team to evaluate products and consult with companies who want to implement the designs and strategies they have come up with. This uh, meshes perfectly well with permaculture. I mean, a lot of it is almost taken right out of the designer's manual, just uh, concept-wise. Basically, what they're talking about is thinking about products with two nutrient flows in mind, one biological and two technical. And the biological nutrient flows would only consist of materials that can be broken down by microbes. That would be food for the uh, environment. And the technical nutrient flows would be materials that are intended to be infinitely recycled. So, and then follow that, the products themselves would need to be designed in a way that the materials can be easily separated for that purpose. Because now we have what they call monstrous hybrids. You have, say, something like a car. It's got plastics, metals, uh, leathers, chemicals, all manner of things in it and the, one of the most valuable parts of it is the steel and what happens is a car gets crushed and all the other mishmash of materials get crushed along with it and it can't even be reused to make another steel body or a frame. It has more virgin steel has to be added to even satisfy the structural demand. So it's completely a uh, missed opportunity there. <clears throat> The other interesting concept, which uh, is something I think is kind of coming up a little bit just based on the fact that people can't afford to buy things. They need to basically lease things. You see phones, everything's got monthly payment plans now. But that's pretty much how all our large appliances and vehicles, why do we need to own these things? We just want the use of them. and. If companies design things where products as a service, they could 
easily recoup the materials and save themselves money, save the energy of mining, the damage to the environment of extracting these resources again, like a refrigerator, a TV, would be cheaper to pay a monthly fee or however that structure would work out. And then when you want a new one, you upgrade. The company takes the product back, easily separates it into its raw materials and reuses it to build another one. It would actually take advantage of people's desire to constantly have new things. You wouldn't feel guilty that you're wasting something. You're actually returning it for something else. So that's one of my favorite concepts that they talk about. And I think it makes a lot of sense. Oh, the other thing that works perfectly well with permaculture is that humans as a positive influence, not a negative one. And basically, a lot of environmental isms, like a lot of other isms, see humans as inherently bad or evil, and therefore we're just trying to limit bad behavior or bad influence. And they talk about the ant as an example. So, this is a good little passage. If you indulge me, I will read it from the book. Consider this all the ants on the planet taken together have a biomass greater than that of humans. Ants have been incredibly industrious for millions of years, yet their productiveness nourishes plants, animals, and soil. So as part of their daily activities, they safely and effectively handle their own material wastes and those of other species, grow and harvest their own food while nurturing the ecosystem of which they are a part, Construct houses, farms, dumps, cemeteries, living quarters, and food storage facilities from materials that can be truly recycled. Create disinfectants and medicines that are healthy, safe, and biodegradable. Maintain soil health for the entire planet. Now, wouldn't that be amazing if we were talking about humans instead of ants? Let's be ants. Human industry has been in full swing for little over a century yet it has brought about a decline in almost every ecosystem on the planet. Nature doesn't have a design problem. People do. And that's what we're talking about. That's what permaculture is talking about. Design. It's a design problem. If we want to retrospectively design the Industrial Revolution with respect to its negative consequences, I will highlight that. Design a system of production that puts billions of pounds of toxic material into the air, water, and soil every year produces some materials so dangerous they will require constant vigilance by future generations, nuclear power, perhaps, results in gigantic amounts of waste, puts valuable materials in holes all over the planet where they can never be retrieved, requires thousands of complex regulations, not to keep people and natural systems safe, but rather to keep them from being poisoned too quickly. I think that's quite an interesting point right there. Measures productivity by how few people are working. Interesting. Creates prosperity by digging up or cutting down natural resources and then burying or burning them. Erodes the diversity of species and cultural practices. Of course, no one set out to do that, but that's exactly what happened. And that's what we need to change with right design thinking. What else? The cherry tree. That's another great example in here they talk about. Waste equals food, right? Biological nutrient flows, technical nutrient flows. You don't think of a tree shedding thousands of blossoms each year as wasteful or inefficient because the blossoms, even if they don't produce a new tree or fruit, they become food for the soil, food for other organisms. It's an interconnected system, a living system. It's not an isolation. This book is not a tree. Why do we continue to make paper out of trees? It's horribly energy intensive. Trees are not a good source to make paper out of, yet we're still stuck on it. This is not the final solution, but it's a step in the right direction. It's actually made out of recycled laundry detergent labels. It is waterproof and it's got some heft to it, but it's visually really pleasant to read with. Right, so the ultimate book would be 
something you could easily separate the cover from the pages because they're going to be two different materials. I mean, if we're talking about books, you know, not everybody's sold on ebooks. Personally, I find them incredibly convenient, but nonetheless, inks usually have heavy metals in them that are very valuable, and you could have a process of either using heat or uh, unharmful solvents to remove the ink from the pages and reclaim them to use again and also the material it being a technical nutrient could be infinitely recycled into more books so brings us back to you know Amazon everything right they're steamrolling all of retail and uh, if we actually think about products this way where we companies need to reclaim their materials, then it has physical locations have a purpose again. You know, why is the consumer, why is the end user responsible for disposing of a manufacturer's product? You produce it and you should make a system to recover or safely dispose of it. Why are cities forced to deal with manufacturer's trash? And another thing about plastic, is more or less plastic is a byproduct of fossil fuel production. So all these giant companies, Coca-Cola, BP, they're all basically feeding from the same trough. They now they're trying to push recycling because there's pushback against their single use plastic and they don't want to lose money. So they're saying, oh no, we just recycle now, it's no problem. Yeah, it's a problem. Your single-use plastic is a problem. You deal with your damn plastic bottles, not me. I don't want it anyway. Uh, one of Jeff Lawton's famous quotes, all the world's problems can be solved in a garden, and it's true. And if you think about it like this, so much of our single-use plastic problem revolves around our food system because it needs to be packaged, transported, sold in stores. So you have a local food system you grow a lot of it yourself out your backyard, wherever you can. You have local farmers and growers, and you can go direct to the source. You don't need things wrapped in plastic. So banning single-use plastic is all good, but if we don't have a system in place, then it's all just going to fall over. Localize your food. We eliminate so much of this waste and nonsense plastic use. So it all kind of sounds a bit negative and down, but you know, what's your priority? How do you want to live? How do you want to influence this world? You have the choice in your dollars to make companies do what you want by what we choose to spend our money on, what products we support. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, 20 years old, I'll put all the links to the book about the authors, their company. This is definitely one of my favorites. It started me on my journey of thinking a different way, and uh, I definitely recommend it however you want to consume it. Get the information, it's really useful. Works perfectly with permaculture. All right, thanks so much for watching. Uh, we'll see you next time.